I take refuge in the truth. I take refuge in the teachings of the truth. I take refuge in those who endeavor to embody the truth, do embody the truth. The first precept of Zen Buddhism, first of the ten grave precepts, is not to kill but to cherish all life. Not to kill but to cherish all life. And the first level of that, of course, is to literally do our best to not kill. Certainly not kill human beings. Certainly not, not kill for sport. Certainly not kill because something is irritating us and we don't like it, and let's kill it and get rid of it. On a fairly gross level, those are all things that create harm to other beings and to our own state of mind. If our state of mind is such that if I kill it, I'll be happier, then where does that end? You know? We, we can kill mice, and we can kill fleas, and we can kill bacteria, and we can kill large <clears throat> animals that might harm us, and then eventually we're killing people. We're killing the planet. And so, in the very short run, sometimes killing appears to be of benefit. But that state of mind, as it grows, harms life. The other side of the precept is not to kill, but to cherish all life, to have respect for all life, to, to look at <clears throat> insects, to look at humans, and look at them closely, and look at them intimately, and look at them carefully, and see what a miracle a fly is, a flea is, a praying mantis is, a human being is to have respect for the miracle of life. And that respect, when we are carrying it with us, shines a light on everything and everyone. Now, if we just had that particular teaching, we could become very righteous and very hard and very self-important. So we have to also look at the precept a little more deeply. For us to live, we kill. We kill plants, sometimes we kill animals, sometimes we kill predators, sometimes we kill you know, insects and vectors. So the very fact that we are alive means that other living beings have been killed to support and sustain us from a level of bacteria on up. If there were a, <clears throat> a rabid dog that was dangerous, we would kill it. If there were um, mice or rats that infected our house and were vectors for disease, we would kill them. The honest appraisal of our own capacity for killing, for death and destruction, is the second part of the precept. And that honest capacity means that we have to have humility. We have to be humble and we cannot be righteous. The third level of the precept, of course, is what is alive? What is life in the first place? Where does life come from? What is that which is most alive? <clears throat> All life comes from the same source, and that source cannot be killed. That source is unborn. That source is beyond birth and death. So if we're really looking at the precept of not to kill but to cherish all life, we have to look at it from all three perspectives, literally to not kill. The humility that, and the, the observation that our life depends upon the lives of others, and the ultimate truth of what is unborn is undying. The 
precept is not simply a moral obligation, although it is partly that. It is a request, a demand, a call to look at the deep fundamental truth. What is it that's alive? 